Tom Hardy is one of the most likable people you will ever see. And in this video, I'm gonna be explaining to you exactly why that is and how you may be able to implement these tools into your array of social skills. So the first clips I'm gonna show you here are clips where Tom Hardy is dealing with interviewers that he doesn't particularly like. We're an LGBT news organization and our question is for Tom Hardy. In the film, your character Ronnie is very open about his sexuality, but given interviews you've done in the past, um, your own sexuality seems a bit more ambiguous. Do you find it hard for celebrities to talk to their sex to talk to media about their sexuality? What on earth are you on about? <laughs> I was referring to an interview given to Attitude magazine a few years ago. But what is your question? I was wondering if you find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. I don't find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. Um, are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. <laughs> Why? Why? Um, Thank you. you. Okay. But I just wanted to ask you, as you were reading the script, did you ever think, why are all these women in here? I thought this was supposed to be a man's movie. No. <laughs> not for one minute. Why not? Good for you. That's no, 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 kind of obvious. Your director's <laughs> leaning on you to bring some comedic moments that we haven't exactly seen you do before. You mean I'm not funny? I think you're extremely funny. I just haven't seen it on camera <laughs> okay. often. Well, thanks for that, bud. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Uh, as a Scott father, you know, you, you point that. What are you about, man? Is it? Is it? Is it is Hollywood, to be an actor, to be an actor in Hollywood. Thanks for your presence. Um, They're awesome. You need to work on those, buddy. Lisa, nice Hello, to meet you. Doing, How are you? Bad uh, questions, man. Um, I, These questions suck. I apologize. If there's one thing that you can say about Tom Hardy, it's that he has a great eye for bullshit and that he visibly does not like fake people and people that kiss his ass. And when he doesn't like somebody, it's extremely clear in his body language. Notice that Tom Hardy's expression for the most part is very neutral when he's responding to questions that he doesn't particularly like or just with people who rub him the wrong way. He has a very piercing stare. It's the kind of stare that says, don't try any bullshit with me. Also, he's not afraid of a confrontation and he's not afraid to show when he's not impressed by something. Oftentimes in these awkward interactions, interactions, people will shy away from saying or showing how they really feel. But Tom Hardy is clearly okay with it. He doesn't try and smile and laugh it off or anything like that. He's a guy whose body language will tell you exactly where you stand. He's a man of few words and doesn't emote in an exaggerated way. When he smiles, it's authentic, it's genuine. You have to earn it. Furthermore, when he answers these questions, his delivery is very slow, very calm, and very dry. He doesn't get angry or emotional about it at all, which is actually way worse for the person on the other end. Contrast this now with his interview with Alan Carr. Aren't you Leonardo DiCaprio's plus one? You could go with him. <laughs> no, no, I don't think he's, I think you'd probably want to take someone else with him. <clears throat> I'd love to go with him. I'd love nothing. to go with him. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't write, he doesn't call. <laughs> I'm dead to him, basically, Tom. So I've got um, three months to do that. How'd you bowl cough? Fat, a lot of fat and trickery. A lot of fat and trickery. Yeah. They do that with me here on Chatty Man. <laughs> I'm actually Why? painfully thin. <laughs> During this exchange, you can see that Tom Hardy is much more comfortable with taking the piss out of himself, which is also such an attractive trait. Everybody knows that when you meet somebody who just wants to talk about themselves all the time and gas themselves up, no one wants to be around those types of people. But somebody who loves to have a laugh at their own expense, much better company. You can also see here how much more relaxed Tom's body language is. He's sitting back in the chair and he's smiling and laughing gleefully. But understand that this is a smile that is genuine and authentic. He'll only give this sort of reaction if he actually means it. So you know that his expression is never fake or contrived. Next, we're gonna look at how Tom Hardy positions himself. One of the major body language techniques that people often talk about is mirroring. And I think this is bullshit. And Tom Hardy is a testament to this. Tom Hardy never mirrors anybody. He always marches to the beat of his own drum. And this is one of the things that makes him such an alpha. Difficult when you see uh you know, what ended up on screen because you realize these men actually did this. <laughs> and we, in, within the context of making a movie, it was an incredible, always something that was entirely unpredictable. You know, 2015 was the hottest year in recorded yeah. history, so we had weather shifts all the time that complicated the entire 
of production. Notice in that clip the difference between Tom Hardy and Leonardo DiCaprio. Tom Hardy is just sitting there nice and relaxed, eating, reading the label and doing whatever he wants. Whereas Leonardo DiCaprio is a man of the cameras and you can just tell by looking at him that this is not what Leonardo DiCaprio is actually like. But you can tell by looking at Tom Hardy that if you were sitting across from him at the pub, this is exactly what he would look like. And that authenticity, the not changing for anybody or any situation, or it doesn't matter if Leonardo DiCaprio is sitting next to you or if you're talking about a blockbuster movie that you've just done, that is one of the things that makes him so likable. For regular people to see him, they would think that he's in a different universe compared to them. But that genuineness that he exudes makes him so much more relatable. And also, side note, Tom Hardy never gets involved with woke politics. Unlike DiCaprio here, who starts hinting at climate change, which is obviously his big thing, Tom Hardy never gets involved with big political issues. And to be in Hollywood and as big as he is, he's one of the only people who has the balls and the character to just not get involved at all. And to not rinse and repeat what everyone else is doing and saying just to fit in with all the cool kids in Hollywood. Next, we're going to look at another trait that is incredibly likable, and it's something that anybody can use. Tom never gets caught up in self-aggrandizement. Now, this is such an attractive trait because so many of these celebrities, you can tell, have such massive egos, and they live for the glory and praise. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for not listening to Megan. And... And leaving me knickers on the floor? They're called underpants. But Tom Hardy genuinely doesn't take himself too seriously. Last one real fast. You know, the reaction to Venom uh, when we first saw in early promos was uh, social media thought he was sexually attractive, that he was hot. I mean, is that was that weird? I mean, is it- It's a weird question. It, it, How do you work between takes, I mean, to get tough, to, to be badass, to be yeah. pissed off? Thank you. I actually play Scrabble. <clears throat> <laughs> You should try it, buddy. But Why do directors love covering your face? Cause I'm, Leo in child Because I'm four. ugly, mate, innit? it? Like, bottom line. <laughs> Let's be brutally honest. Who's a better shot, Tom Hardy or Chris Pine? I'm really spot on with the potato gun. I miss the toilet bowl all the time. Okay. <laughs> How do you keep yourself calm? How do you control your, your, the turmoil within? Knitting. <laughs> You're a knitter? No, no. <laughs> After seeing Mad Max too, man, I mean, the, the physicality of what he had to do for long true. stretches of time in Africa, man, I don't, I really don't know how this dude, he's a beast. Yeah. He really is a beast. <laughs> I'm desperate. You're desperate. I'm trying to claw my way up the ladder. <laughs> like I said before, there's absolutely nothing worse than meeting somebody and all they want to talk about is what they've done and their achievements. But when you meet somebody who's genuinely achieved great things and they don't want to talk about themselves and they deflect compliments and make fun of themselves and heap praise on other people, those are the kinds of people you want to be around. And those are the people who are genuinely confident. They don't need all of this external praise and approval. They move in silence. Which segues nicely into the last point, which is that Tom Hardy is a man of few words. Um, I say, is it a Christmas jumper? It is, isn't it? No, no, I'm... <laughs> He often gives one word responses, two word responses, three word responses, and they hold as much weight and gravity as if somebody said five sentences. He is absolutely cool with silence. He does not need to fill the dead air. He doesn't need to say random things. This is something that probably comes natural to Tom, but when it comes to your words and your actions and your expressions, it's important to think about it as if it's supply and demand. If you're somebody who just talks, talks, talks all the time, chews people's ears off, when you say something, it doesn't really hold much gravity. But if you're somebody who's more calculated and you're happy to to observe a room, to observe conversations, and then add to them when you feel like you've got something genuinely valuable to say, then people will care a lot more for what you have to say. And it's the exact same with expressions. If you're just smiling at everyone you meet and everyone you meet's your best friend and you just spread your love so thinly, then your affection means nothing. But if you're somebody who's more stoic and discerning, people will crave your attention and your approval more. And when you do give it out, it becomes much more valuable. If you like that clip, then I've got the perfect one for you next. Check out the breakdown I did of the five reasons why women love Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Until next time, I'm Jake, and this has been Rattlesnake TV.